previously on Amori. She really is a good artist. I'm pretty sure Omo Cat. Is this Omo Cat? Is this Omo Cat's persona? Oh my God, guys, it makes so much sense. Look, if you take the words Mincy and you move them around some and add a few other letters and holy shit, Omo Cat. Oh my God, dude. It makes so, oh, I was right there in front of us the whole time. God, I see. This is her origin story. It must be. She did get my thumbs up pretty good though. I'm not gonna lie, I look pretty dope. And now back to... Sonny, it's okay. It's not as scary as you think. Just breathe. And just remember, I'll be right here with you. Always. Hello! The Sneako B, back with some more Amori. When we last left off, nothing but happy things. Nothing but happy things. We, we, we pet a kitty and we fed him some fish and we became his best friend. And then we had a party and then we went to our tree house and I reunited with my buddies and we all had a sleepover. It's great and nothing but happy, positive thoughts. And also I murdered my fucking sister and then I went and murdered Basil and then I murdered myself. And then all my friends fucking died off screen. The end, game over, fucking true ending. Ah, uh, oh God, why? Why? Why would the demons leave me now? No! Oh my God, though, seriously, holy shit, dude. It's like, that was like one insane revelation, insane twist that like really hit me fucking hard. Like, oh my God, that did not see that coming. Definitely did not see that coming. And then followed by an ending that was just so fucked. <laughs> it was so supremely fucked. Uh, by the way, I was also informed and sort of, I don't know, I, I, I kind of have to agree with this. First, I was like, I, my in, in, general uh, inclination was for the, there's two more endings, right? And I'm just guessing one's probably a, a good ending and one's probably a not so good ending. Um, I was sort of informed that it might be better to do the true ending first before checking out the alternate ending. Um, because it kind of would ruin some of the momentum and I sort of get that because I kind of felt that a little bit last episode when I did that ending, like, like I felt like such a complete fucking garbage human being for doing that. You know, like I just went through this insane moment. Like of, I'm with my friends, my buddies, right? We're hanging out, looking after Basil. I have this insane revelation. Oh my God. This whole time it was me that killed Mari and. Uh, I've been blaming Basil and shit. You know, he, Basil was trying to do his best and he's in trouble. Like, I gotta go do something. Now nah, I'm gonna go to sleep. <laughs> like, that shit was like, like, it felt like a complete halt of the momentum. And then I go and I see, oh, my friends are all fucked up. Like, like I was inches away from the finish line and actually getting over this shit and just went, nah. <laughs> and then fucking let Basil die and then I kill myself. It's like, what the fuck, man? That shit kind of, ugh, ugh. So, I mean, I don't really like ending on a negative note, essentially, but at the same time, uh, I feel like it might rob some of the potentially what the trending is if I end up just like stopping in the middle of it, you know? So I might just do the trending first. I, I don't know. I don't even know what the choice is. I, I've heard that even seeing that there's an alternate ending isn't super obvious here either. Um, but the game does give you like uh, a place to save beforehand and you can make a choice at some point. Um, but just basically i was just told just go with the flow and i, I you'll probably know what like will not lead to a bad ending at least i would think so okay yeah i think that's probably what i'm gonna do by the way you guys did point out how uh as per the usual my goofy ass fucking antics and predicting shit in this game as it always does apparently last <laughs> well someone pointed this out actually in one of the comments uh says last episode lady holiday said uh nico last episode let's bomb with your friends by hiding a body together me oh dear god <laughs> You know what extra spot comment even better is actually the avatar picture of that fucking owl for Pokemon. I've seen that emote before. The owl looks just like he's like going through some existential dread or something. It's like perfectly matches the mood of this comment. <laughs> oh dear God, no. There was apparently another time where I was joking with Aubrey and she was like, Mari's dead and she's fucking dead. And you killed her, Sonny. <laughs> and I guess technically that ended up being true. And then, of course, the other thing, of course, was the fact that I did technically 
predict initially that, oh, she fell down the stairs, right? That she had some kind of accident. And I even thought that potentially Sunny could have had some influence on that, right? But not to the extent, all right? And no point did I ever think it was to the extent of she, he pushed her down the stairs, right? That is not, was not in anywhere in my wheelhouse. I thought it was something like, uh, like, like I said, the violin or something was like left out and she tripped on it and fell down the stairs or something. Like some, you know, minor thing of neglect. Not like, no, I fucked this bitch. Blah, eat shit. So I never, never got that far, at least not in terms of my actual serious theories. <laughs> I saw someone in the comments who was like, you know, Nico, I think your 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 jokes and your fucking ad libs tend to be more correct than your actual theories. Fuck you. But yeah, you're, you're kind of right, actually. <laughs> actually, I should just start saying, all right, well, I made this joke, so clearly this must be the thing, right? Clearly. <laughs> I just do it for every ad lib, all right? Which means, yes, I am, in fact, Kel's biological father, all right? I had lived that. That is real now. But anyway, Lady Holiday, thank you so much for your uh, enlightening comment. And it's for that reason you are comment of the day. But we guys did also point out there's actually a greater explanations for each of the photos in the uh, Mari's death like photo album uh, that was actually data mined from the game. And it's actually funny because before I even saw what you guys had posted, Nessie had actually reached out to me about it and showed it to me already. Um, she was really excited because I would gotten to the twist, the big twist, and she wanted to, to talk about it with me. Uh, it was really cool. It's Yeah, so basically, it, it, it sort of shows what Sonny's mindset was, you know, and what was going on. That basically, sister was pushing him too hard to practice the violin and his anger. Because we even I mean, heard before, right, in the library, that he was like, I... What it was initially supposed to be a fun hobby, I has now become a chore, and my sister's on my case about it. I just want to uh hang out with my friends so we see them talking on the stairs he in a fit of anger tosses his violin down the stairs and destroys it mari gets upset with him and starts um yelling at him about it uh and then apparently sunny was like going to leave and then mari blocks his path and then sunny shoves her out of the way but because of mari's bad knee more than likely that's what caused her to fall down the stairs and uh, fucking die. And another thing that was sort of talked about as well is that do the parents know about it? I saw some good theories in the comments, and I think I kind of have to agree. I think the parents did know about it, whether it's simply from the state of Mari's body, because we even saw from some of those pictures that she was scraped up a good bit, right? So it's kind of hard to imagine that, that, like, they wouldn't think, oh, what caused this? Even if her neck got fucking snapped, you know, it, like, that would still, like, I feel like there would still be outward physical trauma to the body. But even if that wasn't the case, right? Uh, maybe just Sonny himself told his parents about it. You know, I we, we don't really know. But we see in the game, right? Mom say, she said something, and it didn't really occur to me at the time what she was really talking about. Because I did think it was kind of weird, but it, now it sort of makes sense. But she's like, I've lost my daughter. You are my only son. I don't want to lose you too. She's saying, I think she's saying, I don't want you to go to jail for this, right? Or like lose the rest of your life. I can't afford to lose you too. So it's a very distinct possibility the parents knew and they hit it. And then that also could potentially also give another side to what the dad was saying when he was chopping the tree down. I initially thought he was meant, you are not my son. So he meant like, you're Maury, you're not my son, right? You're just some like fake version of him or whatever. But he might've actually meant that like legitimately towards Sonny himself, like, you were my son is dead like he's disowned his son because essentially sonny's dad is not here right we've only been hearing hearing from the mom so it seems like he did kind of like leave maybe he figured the truth out like this whole thing basically broke the family apart i don't know there's a lot of things that can sort of deep dive into this fuck dude yeah it's fascinating and horrifying at the same time but oh my god dude i've uh wanted to come back to this just so i could i could see what the true ending is and like because this one really sat on me that last one was really fucked up man i i was like i did not like that not like that at all but time to be an ass and leave again bye guys what wait i can actually go out the door really i can go what i can just leave okay it didn't seem to change anything i don't think i still got the music in here maybe you can just go can you just like go straight home grab the knife and go to bed and die that's probably it. Oh, the other thing, the sirens we heard at the end of the Kikimori route, those were actually likely the sirens coming. I thought it was like, oh, Sonny drove the car off the road and they went out in a blaze of glory. 
Uh, I saw some of you guys say it's actually more likely that the sirens are like the ambulances coming for Basil because it's actually very likely that even in that ending, Basil still committed suicide. So, fuck, dude. Well, not today. All right, we're going to stop this shit by going back to... I'm just kidding. Uh, let's go talk to our friends here. Hero has always been someone you can rely on. He's wise, capable, loving, and always puts others above himself. He's the kind of person that will always make himself available to help you, even to a fault. You will really miss him. Kel's always been there for you. Even though he's a bit careless at times, you know he has a good heart. More than anything, he just wants everyone around him to be happy. And he's always been someone you can count on to lift your spirits. You will really miss him. Oh, this is interesting. It's kind of foreboding, right? It's very, it's very kind of vague how he means that, right? You miss him because you're, you're leaving tomorrow, or you'll miss him because you're about to leave this fucking world. Aubrey's always acted true to her feelings. Even though she has trouble admitting how much she cares, her actions have shown otherwise. She's been a little hard to understand, but you can trust that she will always try her best to do the right thing. You will really miss her. It's kind of nice to hear Sonny's actual thoughts about them, you know, since he talks so little. Sonny's going to be hard to tell. I mean, you already can know that his friends mean a lot to him because, I mean, his whole headspace is built around them. But just sort of hearing that, you know, that acknowledgement. All right, fuck that other ending. Let's see what the truth is. But first, let's go see what Polly's up to. Polly, wake up. Basil's doing some shit that we should not be doing. First, I'm going to check the mirror. Ah! 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 Uh, <laughs> damn something, leave me alone. I'm trying to take a fucking tinky. Oh! Oh my god, am I actually going to the bathroom? I am! Oh no, I threw up. Blah. Okay, I feel I feel better now. I think I'm ready to say basil. Wait, let me throw up in the tub first. Wait, one more time. Blah. Okay. Do I feel any better? Nah, he's still there. Alright, fuck this shit. You wanna say basil? Nah. <laughs> Just kidding. Basil! <laughs> Fucking SWAT team kicked that shit open. Kicks the door off his hinges. <laughs> you will not die this day, Basil. If you die, I die. Where you go, I go. Ah, uh, Sonny, it's you. Or it's just you. I'm glad you came. It's, it's so good to see you. It came to you that day. The day Mari died. When Mari, when Mari fell, you, you couldn't have done it. It was something behind you, wasn't it? You're a good person, Sonny. I know you're a good person. A good person wouldn't do something like that. After all this time, you finally come back for me. But... I think the thing, too, that also kind of bugs me, too, is the fact that Sonny clearly has this very repressed, kind of deep-seated hatred against Basil. Like, he sort of blames him for what happened. You know, or the fact that he told her, told, clearly told him to hang up uh, Mari. And that, that was also clarified in those uh, data mind uh, uh, descriptions for each of the pictures that, yeah, it was Basil. That was the one that sort of convinced Sonny to to pretend it was a suicide, right? Um, but goddamn, man. Like, I mean, it was already a terrible situation. And I, like, don't blame him for that. Like, I really don't. Like, I feel like Basil was, like, panicked and he wanted to, like, try to salvage this in some way he was worried he was gonna lose his like best friend i mean i mean it's fucked up like it's the whole thing is fucked up though right her death was fucked up the tiger up is super fucked up but ba i don't think basil's the fucking blame for that shit you know there's literally nothing he like anyone could do in that situation would make it not suck right so he's he's like he picked the one thing that he could possibly think of that could save him from going to jail or losing his life so i feel like his this deep-seated hatred that Sonny has against him that I'm not even sure he was super aware of. It only seems like maybe Amori is aware of, right? It just seemed unreasonable to me, right? But tomorrow, you're going away. How could you do that? That's me, Sonny. So 
so mean! Ha! Ah, there's something all around us now. Can you see it, Sonny? There's no way out of this, is there? Don't you fucking turn back now, Sonny, you little asshole. Where are you going? Stop trying to leave me! Stop it! 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 I don't want to be alone. Not again. You, you can't leave me again. No, you wouldn't leave me. That's not like you, Sonny. It's something behind you again, isn't it? Uh-oh. Ah, uh, there it is now. Do you see it? Stay away! Stay away from Sonny! I'll protect you no matter what, Sonny. You can count on me. When something killed Mari, when something ruined all my photos, I didn't say anything. I didn't want people to think it was you, Sonny. Was something ruined all our photos? So are you saying it wasn't him that did that? Sonny, something wouldn't do something like that. Don't worry, Sonny. I'll save you again. Something behind you. I'll get rid of it once and for all. Sonny, don't be scared. I'm scared too, but this is for the best. Everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. Oh, fuck. Oh my god, this shit's so fucked, dude. This has got the power of a fucking demon in it. And I guess I'm imagining this shit super hard. Or maybe he is actually got the power of a god. Run! You know, it's, it's, this behavior really lines up too of what he actually ended up doing for Sonny, right? He did it because he was thought he was protecting Sonny, or now he's like, I'm doing this because I'm I want to protect you again, right? You didn't kill her sister. It was some it was something else, right? Even he's li been lying to himself this whole time. See my fucking heartbeat there. So I got like a super meter or some shit. Uh. All right, calm down. Stay calm, Sonny. Even though Base is about to murder you. Ah, shit. Try to calm down. But your lungs fought to breathe. Because his eyes are red from crying. You want to run. Uh-oh. But I can't! Focus. You try to focus, but nausea overwhelmed you. You want to run. Sunny. There's no way out of this, is there? Persist. Ah! Try to persist, but you can't, couldn't hold steady. What does he say? Basil reaches into Sunny. You want to run. Stay back. Tell me, Sunny. Am I selfish for doing this? So he attacks Basil. Ow! Ah! Want to run. I did do some damage to him. Sonny. Do you hate me? So he attacks Basil. You want to run. Please. Stop it! I have nothing else to do and you're murdering me! Stop reaching inside me! Waiting for my super gauge to build up. Stop struggling, Sonny! I'm so tired. What, what does it say? It's going to be oak. Okay. Everything 
is going to be okay. Uh, need to use my super. Oh God, stressed out. Stress the fuck out. Oh God, my number's going crazy. Still can't run. Still can't do dick. Having a panic attack. Ugh. Ow, it's hurting more. Uh, uh, I'm hurting him more. Stop it. Die, Basil. Are we fucking stabbing each other? Uh, uh. I think we are. I think we're... I think we're both just panicked and just actually like either punching or stabbing each other. So like stabbing right now. They were stabbing each other with whatever it was that he stabbed himself with in that ending. It's actually, I don't think it's even possible for me to lose this since I have actually nothing I can do but attack at this point. I literally can't guard, I can't run. So it's actually, I don't think it's actually possible for me to even die to this fight. Why would you stop? Ow! Oh god, I can't actually see apart. What are my eyes? Basil stabbing the shit out of me. Ow. Ah, oh, shit. Sonny dead. <laughs> he got stabbed a fuck. Oh, God. Now what's happening? Oh, hey. <gasps> Mr. Mew. -O. What are you doing here, Mr. Mew? -O? I've been looking for you everywhere. Different version of the, the song. Is you going to guide the way for me, Mr. Mew? -O? Just keep going left. Let me in. Let me in. Basil's killing me. This will stab me in the eye. I need a sick eye patch now. Assuming I'm not in the afterlife. Kellen here aren't home right now. Hi, Sonny. Oh, look, it's a normal, not fucking busted basil. Look at his normal, happy expression. You found your way back home. I don't know if I ever said this properly, but I'm sorry for causing you so much trouble. When I gave you my photo album, I really did want you to have it. But somehow, whenever I try to help, I always end up burdening you instead. Even back then, Hmm. So he was suggesting earlier, right, that the that it wasn't he was not the one to black out the pictures, right? And said Sonny wouldn't do that. He said he gave him the photo album. Did he actually give him? Is he referring to this time, or is, did he give it to him another time? I am actually starting to think it was actually Sonny that did black out those photos. If it wasn't Basil, and it was clearly not Aubrey, Hero and Kel wouldn't have been able to do it. So it has to be Sunny, right? But then the question would lead to how did Basil get his photo album back? But at the same time, it also would kind of make sense that it would be, I guess, Sunny and maybe not Basil. But that also, damn, dude, that, if that's the case though, that's really fucking scummy on Sunny's part that he did not take the blame for that. He just let, 
he let Basil be bullied forever. I get that, right? Maybe he didn't realize it until like today, but even then he didn't acknowledge it at all. Oh fuck, that's it, isn't it? Oh shit. That's why he stepped backward when Aubrey was talking before about the blacking out of the photos. That's what it was. That's why he, he stepped backward. It was because he realized that's why she was bullying him. That's what it was. And he's like, oh, fuck. That was my doing. I did that. Oh, fuck. It was his realization. Oh, my God. Okay. Holy shit. Fuck you, Sonny, you little asshole. He still didn't say anything about it, though, even at the end. But God damn it, man. Fuck, dude. All this pain we've been feeling. The guilt in our hearts. If you try to bottle it all up, it all comes out somehow. I want to say that everything will be okay. That we have no choice but to carry on. But that's up to you. Aubrey, Kel, and Hero are good friends. You have to trust that they'll forgive us. It's hard to truly believe that, but the photos in our album, they're not just photos. They're real memories. Our memories. It's proof of our friendship. Hold those pictures close and remember what you want to protect. <laughs> I'm sorry. Looks like I'm burdening, burdening you again. Yeah, it's like, fuck, man. I don't know, man. That is pretty rough. That is pretty fucking rough. Would they forgive him if they, like, told them the truth? Oh, I don't know, man. Because that fucked everybody up so badly, right? Hero would forgive you, like, basically taking away, like, the love of his life. Aubrey for, like, spiral spiraling his her life out of control. Kel's fine, though. <laughs> Kel's like, oh, I got a bunch of new friends, and I'm good at basketball, and I'm taller than Hero. Fuck, dude, you, you made my life 30 times better. Thanks, Sonny. High fives. Yeah. This is why Kel, best son. The path to your future will open up soon, but only you can decide what to do in the end. It's not much, but... I'll be cheering you on. Aww. You're my little buddy, Basil. You helped me hide a dead body. I couldn't ask for a better friend. Sonny, let's make some new memories together, okay? Assuming we're not both dead. So he's like, nah, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> All right. Oh, am I going to go open the toy box? I bet I am now. I fucking knew it. Don't forget, it's in the toy box. Oh. Here's the piano. So Kel must have forgotten to take them home again. Back to the... The house back in the olden days. The coat rack. This is Dad's hat, but I've never seen him wear it. A trash can. Mua likes to hide in here. A shoe rack. Mom's shoes are a mess as always. Regular house plant. Nothing special about it. Cactus. It was a gift from Kel's dad when we moved here. It has survived for a very long time. Mom's flower arrangement. Mom and Mari have been taking classes recently. Sometimes they drag me along. A nice big couch, perfect for falling asleep. I can never seem to sit through a whole movie. Big nice, nice big TV. Watching Saturday morning cartoons here was the best. I can actually finally see this picture, not have it all scratched out. There's the damn dad, fucking left up. And there's like the neglectful mom, baby Mari and baby Sonny. Little did Mari know that Sonny would grow up to murder her ass. Floor lamp. Kel and I knocked over the last one on accident. Mom wasn't too happy about that. We always had a large backyard, so it's nice to finally make use of it now that there's a tree house. The tree house is further back, but I can still see my favorite tree. So I can be your favorite tree for long. A warm fireplace. My baby pictures are over the mantle. I don't like to smile, not even in photos. Books that mom and dad have collected over the years. All they do is gather dust. Bunch of tacky ornaments. Mom likes buying these so much. She even asked Dad to build shells so she can buy more. Family photos. I see some of my relatives more in pictures than in real life. 
a basket full of fruits. Mario's adamant about having fresh fruit in the house. Oh, there's the table right there. Oh, interesting. You can actually see the marks too, right? The table lamp. It probably came with the house. You actually can see the marks there. So that's the table that maybe gets moved with uh, Mari's picture on it? Or actually, was there a different one there? She may have such suggesting there was a different spot there. I don't know. Um, Mom's porcelain vases. There used to be more, but I broke one of them. Mari took the blame for it, though. Aw. A stack of cork coasters. Dad gets them at work for free. A small drawer. Mom couldn't decide what to put here. So we got bandages. Endless bandages. Where's my knife? A microwave. I enjoyed many good meals with this. Kitchen sink. Washing dishes is the worst. Cutting board. Mari accidentally cut her finger here. That was the first time I saw her cry. The stove. Mari begs Hero to cook for her often. But since he makes too much, he ends up co cooking for everyone. An old toaster. Mom says that it's even older than me. What's in the fridge? It's Demon Mari! Leftovers again. An unfinished cup of coffee. Mom leaves this around when she's stressed. Whenever she's stressed. Kitchen counter. Mari and Hero like to do their homework together here. <laughs> the, like to do the dirty here. <laughs> oh, God! You still can't see it, huh? There's a fucking room there, though, man. Even now, I still don't see it. Mom's personal house phone. Used to be in Mom and Dad's room, but not anymore. Table lamp. Mom bought this one on sale. I remember specifically because she made me go with her on a Saturday. Oh, there she is. She has sure gone checked upstairs. Okay, good. I can leave. One, two grandfather clocks. This one always seems to be running behind. Some fake plants to decorate the hallway. I don't really care much for them. No, look. There's still the marks there right here. Was that whole shit, that whole thing I thought was real, not real at all? That's ended up being like they had Mari's picture. No, that's just some dumb shit that didn't matter at all. I guess it ended up being pretty obvious that she was dead. Well, fairly early, I guess. I mean, it, it took me a while because I didn't took a while to actually get on the true end ending route, but... Dad's bonsai tree. I guess it was never totally clear, but you could definitely insinuate pretty well from uh, Hikikomori root. Dad's bonsai tree has grown a lot since I last saw it. Mom and Dad's wardrobe. I'm not allowed to look in there. Alarm clock for responsible people. It's set to be five minutes early. Mom and Dad's bed. Mom sleeps on the left and Dad sleeps on the right. Some dirty laundry. Mario always asked me to fold laundry with her. Oh, that actually would have been interesting. I was thinking, if I look in the mirror, if I'm like, I'm actually like younger Sonny or something, potentially. It's like four years ago, so now it's just me. I threw it in the toilet again. The toilet, very reliable. Uh, some toiletries. Everyone is supposed to have their own section, but no one really, no one can really tell by looking. Bathtub. I don't have much of an opinion on baths. Little plants. They're supposed to be make the room, the bathroom smell better. I'm not sure if they work though. Ah, uh, yep. So they did. They both had a bed in here. I kind of realized it when we saw it uh, last episode when I was standing right here and uh, Basil's behind me and Mari was over here. So they brought her upstairs and put her in her bed, right? And then when they realized she was gone, they that's when they brought her back down the stairs and uh, uh, hung her up in the backyard. Uh, Mari's clothes. They smell like clean laundry. Mine and Mari's school books. Mari has been coming home late because of cram school. She must be tired. Dad's old computer. He gave it to us when he bought himself a brand new laptop for work. The phone that mom made me put in my room. Behind it is a detailed schedule. Mari always has everything planned out. Mari's bed. Mine too when I had nightmares. Aw. Oh, a very, very comfortable bed. It used to be Mari's, but she switched with me when she noticed I had trouble sleeping. Ah. A table lamp. Mari has trouble sleeping, so she reads books before bed. I often turn off this light for her after she falls asleep. A wardrobe meant for clothing, but these days it's mostly full of old toys and candy. Baskets full of baby toys. I haven't gotten around to throwing them away yet. Not until I fucking move and gone through a whole bunch of shit. Let's go talk to Big Sis. Bunch of stools. Basil and Hero set these up so everyone can watch me practice. <gasps> Burr. Muo. Good kitty. Whatever happened to Muo? That's the real question we need to be asking, guys. When two grandfather clocks, this one always seems to be running ahead while the one runs behind, huh? Mari's collection of sheet, sheet music books. Despite Mari being organized everywhere else, these music books are a mess. He's, there's hastily written notes on almost every page. Mom and Dad's collections of, collection of vacation souvenirs. Never liked vacations, but looking back, it wasn't so bad. Sonny, it's almost time. We've been through a lot of these past few days. You must be tired. 
We all make mistakes. You've been running from this one for a long time now. It's just tough to own up to them sometimes. But you'll forgive yourself, won't you? You can do this, Sonny. You've worked really hard to get to this point. There's only one thing left to do now. I know that I'll always be watching over you, okay? As long as you remember me, I will be here. Oh. There we go. I knew it. Yep. It's gonna be the violin. Oh, the light. Light disappears. Cardboard boxes are scanned across the floor. The one room he kept suppressed all this time. Although I guess technically his, his violin also got destroyed, right? It was broken. Unless they got a new one at some point. Empty clothing rack. Do you want to unlock the toy box? I mean, it's gotta be happening just in his mind right now, right? Which actually, in that case, it might... Oh, yep. I was thinking actually then the violin might not be broken. If it's all in his mind. Got a violin. Strands of long black hair are entangled with his strings. Jesus. Got sheet music. The paper is torn and wrinkled by blood. Oh, fuck, Jesus. But it can still be read. This thing looks a little fucked for me to actually uh, play it, but okay. Sheet music for your last recital. Covered him. Oh, God. Oh, was a big splot of blood or something on it. Hey, I actually saw the photo album, though, here. Oh, wait. Am I equipped with the. I am. Cannot be played. I was like, where did the violin go? Grand piano. The words of Mario etched into it. Nobody behind me. Am I leaving? Oh, wait. Out the back? No? Am I going to the recital? Like the last one that we ne we didn't get to do. Oh, memories. Yes, just uh, just what I needed. Uh oh, my hair doesn't look so good. You can't just tell people that, Cal. You have to keep a good poker face. Ah, what you get behind me, Mari? I just got here. You see the bit of you? Here, I did up a cookies for everyone. Just in time for a picture. Basil, are you taking a photo? Oh, yeah. Hit. Oh, man. Do I get a photo when I'm struggling like this? Oh, don't be so dramatic, Kel. It's just a card game. Hit. Huh? Another photo? What's so funny anyway? Oh, he's taking a picture of his hand, right? He has the best hand. You're saying you're not telling us, Basil? Don't worry about it. You'll find out soon enough. In the afterlife. <gasps> I'm me! Look at Kel's hand. It's a four, a six, and a six. D don't look, Sonny. It's... It's too horrible! <sighs> I'm gonna lose, aren't I? <laughs> Mark's cookies are the best, huh, Sonny? Hero, don't be so humble. You know your cookies are way better than mine. Hey, that's subjective. Mars cookies. Mars cookies have much more love baked into them. Oh, I'm gonna love your cookies here in a second. Mari, <laughs> I can eat them forever. Oh, stop it, Hero. You're embarrassing me. Alright, uh, so he's over here like, <laughs> oh god. Here's cookbooks. Mari bought them for his birthday. A bunch of toys are scattered across the floor. Possibilities are endless. Uh, Kel's shoes that he forgot to take home last week. Aubrey stuffed toy, Mr. Plant Egg. Look at you look at Aubrey's hand. It's a two, a five, and a ten. Hmm, what do you think? You, what do you think, Sonny? What should I do? 
Decision is decisions. Look at your hands. An ace and an ace. Tough luck as usual. You look at Basil's hand. It's a jack and an ace. Shh. <laughs> Somebody's getting fu- Somebody's getting fu- Somebody's getting fu- <laughs> Sorry. I'm just, I'm really pumped. I've never won this game before. Don't tell anyone, okay? An old TV. Kel brought it up here, but was pretty bummed when he found out he couldn't use it. A bunch of toys are scattered across the floor. Pa yeah, okay, yes, yes. Blah, blah, blah. A stuffed toy of a girl with a pink hair. She seems obnoxious. An old toaster. Does not make toast. Calendar. Summer vacation is almost over. Get the fuck out of here. You sure you want to go? Yes. He remembered. The smell of freshly baked cookies. Smelled better knowing that Mari made it from scratch. But the violin mended a part of itself. Oh, shit. It is. I'm going to get this shit ready for the fucking recital, I bet. I can't pause and look at it, though. It's going to slowly fuse itself back together. And all of Mari's giblets will fall off of it. Yeah. Good. No, I'm going to keep those giblets on there to remember her by. Or something. We are meant to be true. Look, guys, come up both my legs behind my head. Look, look. And there, watermelon's all cut up. Come on, everyone, take a slice. Oh my God, there's Mari's picnic basket. Yeah, thank you, hero. Look at you, such a big, strong man. Mm. Oh, not now, Mari. <laughs> Woo! Nothing beats a nice juicy marble on a hot summer day. I'm, 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 I'm. Munch, 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 munch. <laughs> Call munching. Hey, don't take a picture of me while I'm eating basil. Uh, oh, that's right, that picture. Uh, I'm sorry, Aubrey. I just saw you look cute. I'll show you when it's ready. Well, okay, fine. I trust you, Basil. It's a beautiful summer day. There's a beach ball. I can't do... Da oh, fuck, never mind. There it goes. Fuck that beach ball. An ordinary sandcastle. Basil's tote bag. It's a little small, but he likes it. Bunch of beach toys. Fun for everyone in the sun. An oil barrel turned trash can. Hey, Sonny, did you want to see the photo of Aubrey? Oh, nom, 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 nom. I've seen this photo already like 30 million times. In the future! Aubrey's so cute, isn't she? Ew, gross! Stop spitting seeds on me, Kel! Ah, you see all over your face! You should see the look on your fucking face! Well, how about this thing? Ew, stop it, Aubrey! Give me your cuties! Ah, you dang slut! This is that you're dead! You're fucking dead! Hear me, Aubrey? I'm gonna shove you down some stairs next chance we get! Let the play hero, they just teasing each other! Remember how we were when we were younger? I used to have bugs in your desk all the time to see your reaction. You're always so funny. Wait, that was you? <laughs> oh, whoops. Am I in trouble now, hero? I hope I am. Mm. Guys, come on. We're at the beach. We're supposed to be relaxing. Blah, blah, blah. Here's his beach bag. It's made with... It matches with Mari's. Mari's beach bag. It matches with Hero's. Aubrey's pouch. It fits with her perfectly. Kel's backpack. It's way too big for him. My plastic bag. It, it's functional. It's okay. It's got my medication in there and sunscreen and nothing else. Fully eaten watermelon. It was delicious. La, 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 la. It's my favorite goofy song in the game right here. La, la, la. La, la, la. La, la, la. La, la, la. No shoes on the beach. Walking on sandwich shoes is the worst. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, ba. Lifeguard tower. Guess no one's on duty today. Relax, unwind, and enjoy. I like there's a cat in the, the song, too. <laughs> That's Mr. Muo. Alright, I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> fuck you guys. Sonny, where the hell are you going? Sonny! Can you grab my game, my finger mouse man? Sonny! You remember the taste of watermelon. It tasted more delicious when you ate it with everyone in the hot summer. Bow a minute, a part of itself. All right, now what? Remember that time you murdered Mar? Okay, no, no, not this one. <laughs> What's the next one? Remember when you smashed him, committed? Okay, a different one. Remember that time you stabbed Basil in your in your fucking dreams? Oh, oh god damn it! Nothing but death left. Mm, looks like everyone fell asleep. I guess it's just this three now. Everyone must be feeling sleepy after such a big meal. 
Thank you for cooking for all of us, Hero. Oh, it was nothing. I'm just practicing a little. Glad you all liked it. One day, you're gonna be a world famous chef. You're gonna cook with me lots of yummy food. Well, I like, well, I like naked in your bed. Huh? Well, wait, I am? Of course you are. I believe in you, Hero. Well, if you say so. Are we not gonna see this one? Glad you use your, your camera now. Good morning, out, Basil. You seem to be enjoying your new hobby. Yeah, I guess it's pretty fun once you get the hang of it. Wait a second. There's something strange in this photo. <laughs> Hector, how could you? Oh, yeah. That's the one that got bit. Ah, oh, God, I'm so fucking wasted. <laughs> that watermelon messed me up, dude. Wake up, Sonny. There's a world to save. Get up, Sonny! Hey, Sonny, can I poke your brain for a minute? I really love cooking and all, and Mario always says I'm really good. My parents want me to become a doctor. Do you think I should become a chef? Yes. Uh, maybe. We're still young. We should dream big, right? Hmm, but yeah. I'm also going to have something to say about that. A plate wipe clean. Here I always make sure that Kel finishes his food. God damn it, I swear to God. Uh, you ate my fucking sandwich again. Much toys scattered across. Ah, yes. Blah, blah, blah. Pinwheels blow freely in the wind. Oh, hey. I can't say it. I... Funny, I didn't bother to examine the picnic basket in the other area. All right. New slot. I didn't see anybody mention anything about the other ones, so I'm guessing I've gotten everything up to this point. I swear to God. I'm in memory lane. Aubrey hardly makes any noise while when she is sleeping. Uh, uh, sleeping. So cute. Oh, hey, little brother. Sorry. Do we wake you up? You look so peaceful sleeping there. Reminds me of when you were just a baby. Hey, Sonny, I took a photo of everyone earlier. Want to see? Uh, God, I tell you what. Uh, I feel like I'm grabbing some ass right now. No, Sonny, what are you doing? Get out of here. This could have been such a good shot, but Hector had to ruin the photo with his poop. Uh, maybe I can cover it up with tape later. Oh, oh, I see. I was like, what is he talking about? Oh, no, he just took a poopy in the back. That's what the tape was there for. I thought he, I thought he like bit the picture. Gotcha. I'm glad I let me look at it again, because I'm sure a lot of people saw that were like, what, huh? A half-eaten watermelon. The other half is in everyone's stomachs. Everyone's shoes. Can't get the picnic blanket dirty. The safe place. <laughs> cookies given to the lake. Mari's cookies. Oh, I took a cookie and I sat by the edge of the lake. That's cute. Oh, I just realized Hector's poopy's still there. Ah, fuck. Ah, ah, ah. I'm staying with my bare feet. That's so gross. Sonny, pick it up. No, pick it up. Oh, God. Bark, bark. Bark, bark, bark. Cat, pet, dog, on flashback. Zero out of ten. Hey, there's the pinwheels again. In different spots. It's symbolism. So much symbolism. All right. Let's get the fuck out of here, Sonny. Too cool for these guys anyway. Remember the feeling of being sleepy in Mari's lap. It felt more comfortable because you knew that no matter what, Mari would always keep you safe. And you murder in cold blood. <gasps> oh, rain, raincoat, umbrella scene. Yep. Hey, Sonny, hey, Basil, what took you guys so long? Check out what I can do. Look. He like jumps in the bottle. Ah, yeah. Ah. Sorry. We got carried away playing this new game where you fight each other with these things called pet rocks. Basil, Basil, take a picture of my new raincoat. Oh, okay. One sec. Do you like it, Sonny? It's my favorite color, pink. Ew, pink is gross color, just like you. No, it's not, Kelly. You're a gross color. Your mom was a gross color last night. What does that mean? I don't know. I heard somebody say it to me earlier, and I've been trying to figure it out. It doesn't even make any sense. You don't make any sense. Oh, Sonny, that reminds me. Mara and I were talking about dyeing her hair together. Mara says she's going to dye her hair purple. P purple You know what color I choose? Wait, are you saying you want to dye your hair pink? Eh, that's weird. Why would you ever do that? I don't know. I said be cute. Mara thinks so, too. Huh. I never understand you two and your crazy ideas. I think pink would look good on you, Aubrey. What do you think, so Sun? What do you think, Sunny? Yes. Sunny says she think he thinks that pink is a great color. 
See, even based on Sunny agree. You're the one. You're the one who's weird, Cal. Psh, whatever. Yeah, fuck you guys. Orange is the best. Just like Orange Joe. You said you and Basil were playing the new Pet Rocks game? Hmm. Yeah, I should get into it too. I'll call him Hector. Just like every every pet I get. Hey, I know. Why don't we go to Hobbies to check if they have any new stuff? Yeah, that sells it. One day I'm gonna dye my hair pink and become a badass. Uh, but maybe not anytime soon. My dad's kind of strict about these things. Good thing he's not gonna be around forever. What is this, Sonny? Did you want to see the photo? <laughs> photo bomb, bitch. You always ask ask to look at my photo whenever I take any pictures of Aubrey. Do I? Maybe says a little crush. You feel your ears turning red. Cute. Eh, don't worry, I won't say anything. My lips are sealed. Oh, I'm so fucking adorable. I mean, it seems like Arby could have had a crush on on Sunny. You know, it's it's hard to tell. Like right there, she was like, "Hey, Sunny, what do you think of my new ring coat or whatever?" Right. So it's not impossible, but you know, it's clear that it, it's clear that he hoped so, right? Oh, you going on ahead, Sonny? Don't worry about us. We'll catch up in a minute. You know, checking out his headspace where he was seeing Aubrey fight over him, right? But who knows? It, it could also just be him. T that's w the way he took it, right? Well, probably never know. Remember, the sound of falling rain has hit your umbrella. It sounded more calming knowing that you were staying next to your best friends. I'll admit it a part of itself. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens when I get back to the real world, though. Or like Basil and I are gonna be fucking just like lying there bloodied on the floor. You two just start having a stab off. Whoever dies first loses. Rashida won't be in the photo, Sonny? Sonny's a bit camera shy. We all have those days, don't we? Oh, birthday time. It's okay, Sonny. You'll get used to it soon enough. He. <laughs> I think we're jumping kind of further back in time. Yeah, this is actually the, the earliest photos here. Well, this kid looks so amazing. Yeah, that's right. This is when Basil gets his camera. You've really outdone yourself this time, Hero. Yeah, yay. Thanks, Hero. I love strawberries. It is kind of heartbreaking to see how, like, how, like, wholesome and everything and beautiful everything used to be, right? Basil, Basil, well, what wish are you going to make? Hey, get ask that, Aubrey, or else it won't come true. <laughs> Mari's like, well, I know I wish you for it. I hope I don't get pushed down the stairs by my little brother who just had to be a little demon lord. And then he and Basil hang my body up outside and pretend it was a suicide. But, ah, uh, this is me. I know. I better see little Billy again. Huh? Is that how it works? Then in that case, I wish the kid would get straight A's in school. Hey, you can't do that. No! No! Mm, a wish? Ah, uh, but what should I wish for? I have everything I could want right here. Oh, I know. He, I think I'll wish for. Just kidding. It's a secret. Uh, I want to know, though. What did he wish for, guys? Th that things wouldn't turn to shit after this year. Guys, we don't hurry. The candles are going to melt. Are we all ready to sing? Yeah, you bet. Did you want to start us off, Mari? Sure thing. <clears throat> and one, and a two, and a three, and four. Happy birthday to you. I like it. Cal's spinning his circle. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! That's my son, guys. That's my son. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Basil. Happy birthday to you. Woohoo! Blake, yes, Basil. Make a wish. He remembered Basil's smile as he was about to blow out his birthday candles. But he also remembered, as Basil made his wish, he made one too. At that time, he wished for everyone to be happy. And he hoped that one day you'd be able to wield that steak knife that's right next to the cake. Violet admitted a part of itself. Is that the last one? Oh, it's snowing now. It's starting to get chilly. Nope. It's my thing. Wow, a new basketball? Thanks, bro. No problem, Kel. You thank me by doing a little better in school. Uh, okay, that's not gonna happen. Uh-huh, you bet, sure. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, Sonny, it's time for you to open up your present. 
Ah, yes. Christmas time is here. This year, you just get one present from all of us. It probably doesn't look like much, but we all to save up for it together. Yeah, me and Basil even started selling cookies and lemonade in the summer. And Mari and I took a job at the bakery for a while, if you if you remember. Oh, wow. So everybody, like, everybody saved up for this violin, and then so he's like, fucking destroys it, and then murders his sister with it. And me, I had to deliver newspapers every morning for like three months. And you know how much I hate mornings. We know this might be a lot of pressure, but it's been a while since you quit playing the violin. Mari told us about how you always sit in the room with her when she's practicing piano. And there was even that one time I caught you trying to play your old mini violin, even though it was too small for you. Anyway, this is Basil's idea, but we all decided to pitch in for a really nice one. So, yeah. Hope you like, hope you like it, Sonny. This is from all of us to you. This thing's bigger than my whole body. Oh, yeah, you guys did kind of ruin the surprise there. We hope you like it, Sonny. Go on, try it out. You felt a tingling in your fingers, as if on its own, your body ready the violin to play. You remember the anxious feeling in your heart as you played the first note on your new violin. That scared you, but you didn't mind, because they believed in you. No matter what, you didn't want to disappoint them, because they were your friends. Yeah, actually, yeah, this was the first picture. That's right. I forgot. The violin regained its shape. Yeah, we did. We, we went further back in time, starting from the latest thing to the earliest thing. You remember the smell of freshly baked cookies. Same things I saw. Yep. Go back. There is no turning back, bitch. Hey, everybody. It's Younger Form and in color. Sonny, you're finally here. Oh, like you're coming out of white space. After this point, it's going to be up to you. You know, before we met, I had a lot of trouble fitting in. Even after we all became friends, I always assumed you were going to leave me eventually. But when the others were busy doing things, you always seemed to have time for me. You would listen to me talk for hours and hours. I could always rely on you to do that. I know we missed out on each other for the past few years, but it doesn't have to stay that way. People always tell me that I'm denser and I'm kind of careless, but I'll always be here if you're okay with that. Sonny, we know you're not someone who likes to take the lead. This has really been hard for you, but you have to put a little bit of trust in us too. Just because you've done something bad doesn't make you bad had to live with this pain for so long and you've been keeping it all inside it might be easier to ignore your problems but it's okay to cry about them too there's more good times to come life gets better and you can be the one to make that happen oh whatever happens next is going to be your call but we're here for you because you want us to be and really hope that this isn't goodbye. No matter how far you push your feelings down, they'll always come back somehow. And what you do with those feelings, that will be your truth. Hey, Sonny. Break a leg for me, all right? Whatever you end up choosing, we'll always want what's best for you. Keep us in your thoughts. We'll be cheering you on. You can do this, Sonny. I promise to stick with you until the very end. Yeah, I think we'll always be best friends. It's okay with you too, right? I'm gonna imagine this is probably where you can choose to 
choose your endings, probably. Um, maybe you just like leave here. Maybe that's how it goes. Um, but for now, let's just see it. Let's see the truth. We believe in you, Sonny. Uh, the podium with the light. I didn't actually even get a chance to investigate this before when I was looking at it. Oh, see, nope, shakes his head. No turning back. An empty music stand. You want to place down your sheet music. Place the sheet music onto the music stand. The stage is ready for you. Do you want to play the violin? I'm ready choosing to say no there or something. But yeah, I think seeing if, if I ever just like stop it at this point, that would kind of ruin this. I, I'm in the moment, man. I want to see it. Show me. Is Mari going to be up there with me or just me? Oh, there's the song. Finally, he finally cries. Oh, back to white space. But now I need to fucking destroy you. You're the one thing left. You need to be gone from this place. Yep. I got a lot of health, sunlight, and juice. Calm down. Allegro, attack three times. Your juice will not fall for three turns. Heal your wounds and come back stronger. Sonic gathered himself. Ow! Oh, I read the heart. Ow! Fuck you. Oh, am I cutting him with the... I'm cutting him with the... The string, uh... I, I don't know, the baton, what do they call it? For the violin? That's what I'm actually attacking him with. That's so cool. That's so fucking cool. More slash wildly. Ow, ow, ow! I can do that too, bitch. Run the heart, asshole! Heal my wounds. Stays his breathing. You remember Kel's words. Friends? Friends are supposed to be there for each other. Come back stronger than before. Get out of here! Ah, power! Oh my god, it's a lot of power. Omori did not succumb.
Moria races the enemy. Ow! Yo, you're trying to race me now, motherfucker, with your red hands. Oh, right. And you guys, it sort of occurred to me, too. And you guys point out that the red hands, the symbolism, symbolism behind that is that getting caught in the act, right? Red, getting caught red-handed. Damn, dude. My God, there's so much ridiculous symbolism in this game. So much thought. You remember Aubrey's wish. Hope you can find some peace, or you know, some happiness. Not at least the Aubrey in my head. Uh, you've caused so much suffering, yet you do nothing. And so you've earned nothing in return. Is that actually Amori talking to me? Your friends will never forgive you. They'll abandon you like you did them. And that's what you deserve. Amori did not succumb. Oh God, the red hands. They come. No, fuck you. So he gathered himself. And tell yourself that you don't want to burden the others. But the truth is that you're selfish. You just don't want people to depend on you. Ow, getting strong. He remembered Hero's promise. Last time, we made the mistake of leaving each other when we need each other the most. This time, we'll stay together. When do you think about others? How long are you going to let people take care of you? You say you care, but you're a liar. You've never done anything for anyone else. You're useless. Less than useless. You're sick. Now die, demon lord. Die, evil thoughts. Die, boxer man! Damn boxer shorts, I swear to God! People like you don't deserve to live. Your red hands can't do harm to me. People like you don't deserve to live. Mori did not succumb. Oh my god, what the hell's happening? What am I looking at behind him? God damn it, they were right. You are evil. You are evil, Amori. I knew it. Steady your breathing. Remember Basil's hope. Maybe one day, things can go back to the way they were before. Your friends are wrong about you. The person they love isn't you at all. You let them believe in a, li a lie to protect yourself. Ow, it's really starting to hurt now. Stop doing so much damage, you debuff me. You're nothing but a liar. When they see the truth, they'll hate you as much as you hate yourself. Calm yourself. Sunny, focus. Focus. If they knew the truth, you'll never be able to get, regain their trust. No matter what you do, it'll be hopeless. All you do is make things worse. It'd be better to just die. No, not this day. Ow, fuck that hurt. Ah. It'd be better to just die. Shut up, asshole. Ow. Better to just die. Mori will not succumb. Damn it. You, it'd be better if you died, dickhead. He 
You remembered Mari's request. You'll forgive yourself. Won't you, Sonny? Oh, power! You killed Mari. She loved you when you killed her. <laughs> ah! No. Oh, there can be no fear here. The music's going, ah, oh, goddammit, Crooked Mari. Nero loved you and you killed her. <laughs> ah! Aubrey loved her and you killed her. Stay calm. Kel loved her and you killed her. <laughs> Hazel loved her and you killed her. Damn it. Could get my move off. You loved her, and you killed her. Damn, I just can't get it out, man! You loved her, and you killed her. I think I must have to rely on my attacks. Shit! Oh, I can't get calm. More slashes wildly. Shit! You loved her, and you killed her. God, I might die if I, I might be able to kill him. If I, oh boy, left her and you killed her. If she did not have that much health, but I'd realize that I've been attacking this whole time. Ah, uh, left her and you killed her. Ow! You just die. I think I died. Yep, damn it! I did not realize. Ah, should have been just attacking, basically. I tried to get my skills off, but it didn't work. Because he'd, he'd, he'd end up uh, silencing me before I get it off. Or not? Do you want to continue? <gasps> yes. Oh, interesting. Oh, no, maybe it was scripted after all. Bitch, I ain't dying here. I'm gonna kill you with music. Play. Mari's here. Oh. 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 Oh, she lost her shoe. That's when they met Aubrey. They brought that up. They met Basil.
Oh, there's that one. That was that image. Oh, that was when she pulled him out of the water. I see. I saw that in black space, that picture. Oh man, dude, that's made me tear up a little bit. And they had the recital. This time, Amori's gonna, yep. This time, Amori goes and disappears into me. Ah. Uh, one last bow. To white space. Let's get the fuck out of here, dude. I had a feeling I might be like in the hospital or something. I saw myself in a bed there after that game over. Oh, I got an achievement. Universally loved. Flowers from Kel and Hero's family and Aubrey. S sending a little get well sunshine your way. We miss you, Sonny. Flowers from Charlene's family. Dear Sonny, thank you for your help during the summer. Warmest wishes for a speedy recovery. Uh, flowers from Mincy. Thank you for motivating me to keep sketching. Hope you feel better soon. Thank you. Thank you of you always. Oh, this is it. These are based on the quests you do, aren't they? That achievement I just got. Let me check it. Receive all flowers in the hospital. Yup. That's the achievement for every quest. Fuck yeah, I did it. <laughs> I did it. Actually, funnily enough, it's actually not the rarest one, though. This one had a 1.4% uh, rate of uh, completion. The actual one that's actually even rarer than that is the jukebox one. Collecting all the seeds for the jukebox. That one's at 1.3% completed. Flowers from Shopkeep. Yo, Sonny. Just saying healthy vibes your way. You're always welcome in hobbies. Buy some more of my pet rocks. Flowers from Joyce family. Hello, Sonny. Get, please get well soon. Thank you for tutoring Joy over the summer. She's doing very well in all her classes. You didn't fuck up. Flowers from Chris's family. Hope you're taking it easy, Sonny. Hospital life ain't that bad. It's just the universe telling you you watch more TV. Flowers from Jesse and Jesse's dad. Uh, hope you'll take care of yourself, Sonny. Jesse's been talking to me a lot lately. You must have picked out a great birthday gift. A get well gift from Artis. Hi, Sonny. Hope you're taking it slow and easy. Get well soon. Come visit. Need you to ask, ask you for some more opinions. Flowers from Sean and Karen. Wish you well, Sonny. We're all finished moving into our new home, so please come visit us sometime. Flowers from Baby's family. Sonny, thanks for buying me that floor lamp. I never did see my son Billy again. Hope he's doing all right. Oh, God, Billy. He's joined the cupboard because I called this. I tried to stop him, but he's too powerful. Flower from Sarah's family. Hey, Sonny, thanks for saving my marriage. I th I'm sure you'll be back on your feet in no time. Flowers from Brent's family. Hey, Sonny, hope you are feeling stronger every day. You're a big help to Brent over the summer. He's been doing excellent in school. Heck yeah. 
Get well a gift from Vance, Kim, Charlie, and Angel. And the Maverick. Get well soon, my sonny. We'll be waiting for a rematch. Some get well gifts from Daphne and Bowen. Oh, boy. Partake in this bread and regain strength. Then play with us again. Play with us. A very, very comfortable bed, but now it's not the time to sleep. God, I hope fucking Basil's all right. I think we kind of did a number on each other here. Nothing but static. I almost, I almost missed this one. Uh, get well gift from Kim and Vance's dad. So you some good wishes, just like a big old rubber ball, you'll bounce back. Oh, oh, this one too. Get well gift from Kim and Vance's mom. Get well soon, Sonny. Oh, that's kind of cute how they're on opposite sides of each other. Please get to, to know Kim and Vance better. They can use a good role model like you. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm a, I don't know if I'd say I'm a good role model for them. Nothing but static. You find a knife, gotta bust my way out of here. Come on me, I'm just blue for some reason. Need an eye patch. What in the fuck did Basil get me with? Basil done fuck me up. Doors locked. Doors locked. <gasps> it's my headspace friends. Is it actually them though? But of course my real friends? No. Oh. Basil's down this way. Check up on him, make sure he's alright. Oh, was the headspace friends there to lead me astray or some shit? Now fuck them. They're not real. I have to tell you something. Just ends there, huh? So he's gonna tell him the truth, huh? Right there. I mean, Basil's still alive, which is good. I do hope there's a post credit scene, though. <laughs> I like this. There's lyrics, but nobody's singing. Memories of the past, good and bad, for well me. Hey, Deck Killer! I recognize Deck Killer from the old RPG Maker days. So much I wish I could take back. Sometimes I, I sing them this song. Maybe it's too late. Though the pain remains, and though it may be hard, I'll carry on. <laughs> Time to rise and shine and boo -de -de boo Toby Fox. Yeah, I hope there. I hope it's a post-credit scene, not just like, well, left up to, to your imagination. Do they forgive him or not? I don't know. Guess we'll find out in Amori too. <laughs> Me? Oh, me? Oh, game you shouldn't have. How did you know? How did you know? Special thanks to Nico for being the father of Kel. Thank you. Yeah, I did that. That was me. One more day. Achievement achieved. Oh, yes. Post credit. Oh, there's still the shadows there. Is that thing still behind me? Oh, I smile. Oh, I finally smile. 
and the darkness, it recedes. Thanks for playing. The pinwheel left a Mars tree. Oh, that's cool. Tile screen changes after the true ending too. That's awesome. Wow. Well, I mean, we didn't get a total answer there. It is a little hard to imagine that my friends would necessarily take that super well, right? But I think the I, the game is sort of telling you, te you know, showing you that, you know, because they are true friends, right? They'll they'll find a way. They'll they'll find a way to forgive them. Okay, I decided to check the nose of what what you have to do to get the alternate ending. So apparently to get the alternate ending, you actually have to choose no in that final that that scene there. I actually thought it was like leaving maybe before you you did a recital. In that case, I'm actually just going to look it up online because to be honest, there was a lot of scenes between I mean, I, I saved right before I did my recital, right? But I also had that long extended battle against uh, Amori. So I think I'm just going to look it up online real quick. All right. So yeah, so you have to go to the when you do the fight, you just choose no instead. Ah, uh, I see. Oh, I see. Yep. The vice versa. You drop your violin and then you get absorbed into him. Back to feeling nothing. Do you just die? Like the heart monitor goes. Dur, dur, burr. Uh, going to welcome back to. Yep, welcome to white space. You've been here for fucking ever. Ah, uh, okay. And then you go back to white space. Okay. And then you just, what, go back to headspace again? I'm kind of curious what happens if you end up following the uh, headspace kids up north instead. Just leave the building. <laughs> it's Amari! Best character in the whole game. Everybody loves Amori. Oh, okay. Get together and then. Oh my God. You get some fucking you Nikki ending. Jesus. It's a long way down. Do you want to jump? Oh my god. That's so fucked, dude. <laughs> what the hell? They didn't bother to have the, to fix up this balcony. Close your eyes. Oh my god. <laughs> this is pretty fucked. Not gonna lie. Okay, is it? There's a song playing here, and I know it's going to be copyright. I might have to mute this, unfortunately. But if you want to know what the song is, it's the song they played in one of the trailers for it. Dun, 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 dun. It's like weirdly upbeat for something so morbid. Dan's a very large building. Yeah, it sucks. I'm probably going to have to mute this. It sucks because it's actually, the music is actually going in time with what's happening. Become as toast. Did I hit the bottom yet? Oh, oh my god. We got a little glimpse there at the end. Oh shit. 
The tile screen changes for this one too. You just disappear. <laughs> Amori bad ending. Bad ending indeed. Yeah, it definitely kind of puts a damper. I'm kind of glad I, uh... I mean, to be honest, I still don't think it's actually as morbid as the other one was. Um, but the nice thing too is this way, my, uh, my tile screen doesn't have to change. Yay. Because <laughs> if I did that, that means I'd have to end with an empty tile screen. But no, we're gonna end with the happy thing and the happy music and everything. Or at least up more uplifting music. <sighs> well, guys, uh, that was Amori. And I actually managed to see most of the stuff this game had to offer, which I'm really glad. Because I I feel like that really did help leave a stronger impression on me too. Just like the just seeing the full extent and the scope of this game. And all the little stories that were in there really made this LP a lot more special, even though it, it probably doubled its length. Like if I didn't bother, I just went, if I just went straight through the game and ignored like all that shit, damn, I would have been probably done like probably 15 episodes ago. Like the game itself really is not that long, but with all the extra stuff and trying to find lore bits and everything, oh man, that extends out quite a bit. Um, but I think it's super great. But my final thoughts on the game, this game is fucking brilliant. Holy shit, man. Holy shit. This game is absolutely brilliant. Uh, in just so, so, so many ways. The character writing in this game is just on some next level shit. Like, it's just so good. I love these characters so much. And it's not even just the main crew, right? I mean, I, I love them. Like, I love all of these characters. They're so good. But even the people you meet in town, right? They're the stories they have to tell, the how you get sort of get involved and help them out in some way. The father and his son, the father not understanding what to get him for his birthday, and the son realizing he's being selfish. The old lady who lives with her her shit bag of a son, but also has got Charlene and she's awesome. Kim and her friendship with Aubrey, all the parents there, the divorced parents too. They're like family life. It was just so unbelievably engaging. Just every single one of them. Like I didn't, there wasn't like a dud among them. Every single one of them was just so, so interesting. And so expertly crafted. So much time, so much time was put into everything with the fucking writing of this game. The characters and their, uh, the relationships with each other, right? Uh, and its effects on the main story and how the big twist there, right? The death of Mari, how that affected that relationship, how it affected their view of the the world for the next few years, how it changed them as people, how it threw everything upside down, and how this game portrays like depression and suicide and dark thoughts and everything like i initially when i started the game i'm like oh this is you know kind of cool and sort of clever in some ways like like with just the darkness and everything and i'm like but it, i was like was it probably a really super impressed until i started getting into black space i think that's when the game really started to maybe go oh my god this shit is fucking insane like that just the the lore and stuff in black space in my opinion black space in this game i, I feel like a better you yeah that's right i fucking said it it did what you was trying to do but made it so much better it may it's because we had context the problem with you is that you have pretty much no context aside from just her little room and the world that she creates right there's like no other context this one you had a bit more context so you could put more together but it just was so much more like interesting just god i had so much fun just diving into black space and trying to find the lore when i didn't know anything about what was going on and god damn man it's just like hours and hours spent like searching around in there you know um and i think that's what i'm glad that i did that before i had the answer right like i don't want to know the answer yet like i wanted to i wanted to see if i could piece as much of it together myself you know because if you have the answer it makes it a little less you don't feel as many inclined as to go back and find all those easter eggs you know i knew that if i didn't have those answers that was what was going to drive me and so much of this game so much of the drive in this game is to uncover the mystery and the lore behind everything and it's like even when you think you figure it out holy shit man that twist at the end really that shit got me man got me so good yes i might have joked about it or i might have made a relatively close theory at, at the start of the game, but it was still like, 
I didn't see it coming, man. All right. I definitely did not see it coming. I did not see it being Sunny that actually like pushed her and was directly responsible for it. Not like some, I was thinking maybe something sort of indirect, but not an actual direct responsibility for it. And then it just makes every, everything suddenly just makes so much sense. Why Basil's so terrified of the world. He's just guilt-ridden, so horribly guilt-ridden, right? He's probably scared that people are going to find out about it. They're ruining it. You know, Sonny's life, his life. I don't know. I, I, at that point, it almost seems like he cares more about Sonny's life than he does his own, right? But how, like, the the game just portrays these moments of conflict and self-doubt and self-loathing and everything is so insanely, like, grounded in reality. It's kind of disturbing. Like, <laughs> how, like, you, you play this and it doesn't feel like some cop-out bullshit or some magical, whimsical, assholery stuff, you know? Like... Like, that's kind of what I was sort of worried about, I think, a bit at the start with, with just headspace and its general, like, mysticism about it. I'm like, it's, like, gonna kind of magicify the idea of, like, bad negative thoughts. And, but it does it in such a way that's, like, where the conversations these characters have with each other. Like I said, like, it feels real. It feels like these characters are really going through some fucking shit, you know? And even during these moments, like, I never was like, dude, that's out of line, man. I was like, no, that makes sense to me, you know? I mean, makes sense. I mean, emotionally makes sense. Because a lot of things that we do when we're in moments like this don't make sense, right? Uh, from a logical standpoint. Was it logically the best thing to do for Basil to help Sonny tie up his sister to make it look like a suicide? No, but he was desperate. He had no idea what to do. Sonny had no idea what to do. And in the end, it did sort of end up leading to what probably sort of prevented them from grieving properly, right? Just put it behind us, you know? Pretend it was a suicide and just, just like, whatever, block it out of your head. Block the truth from your mind. And that's why, I, now I see too why the, the picture of the broken violin was what set off Basil, right? But I, I will say the way also the game does actually seem to draw on this this level of mysticism with like the, the egret orchid, right? Um being the, my thoughts following you to your dreams. Like there's a there's a weird level of cons consistency in its lore in this game. Character actions make sense based on their personalities. The actual like consistency of the lore itself and how it's portrayed in headspace, how it's portrayed in Sonny's illusions um, and what he thinks to himself and his like inner monologue. With just how much was in this game, because, yeah, maybe the game itself isn't terribly long if you bust your, you know, bust your ass through it. You can probably get through it pretty quickly. But if you really take the time to look at everything and all the details that are placed in this game, it's just crazy that they could keep this level of consistency. That's that's what boggles my mind. There's just so much symbolism, too. So much symbolism. Like, just it just seems like it would. T I would. T I feel like it might take years to even just like, like craft and form the concept for this game and how it functions, you know? The red hands, oh, caught red-handed. There's that one symbolism. Again, I mentioned the white eager orchid, thoughts following you into your dreams, explains the, like, Basil's, like, doubts and stuff appearing in Sonny's mind. Something itself, you know, being Mari's dead body, but simplified in a way, the thing that always looms behind him. And just how it weaves itself into the narrative and it pulls it off and it doesn't feel stupid. That's, probably, that's the thing. I feel like that this is a story that could have easily been so fucked because it's so hard to, to tackle delicate issues like this and not seem like angsty and overly dramatic and stuff like that, right? If that makes sense. You know, like you're, like you're watching an anime and the characters are like dramatically acting ridiculous over some stupid shit or they're acting in ways that don't feel real or you're just like, oh my God, anime scream, you know, from the gods. And, and it, none of that feels like, there's none of that shit here. Everything feels so genuine. So much so that I, I feel like the inspiration for this story, I just wouldn't be surprised if it was taken from a, a real life experience of some kind, maybe many real life experiences. That's how real this game kind of feels. And it, you feel it too, especially when you're playing through the sections of like, even just in headspace where, you know, the the, the childhood sections, you know, hanging out with your, your buddies, you know, that feeling of like, you feel like your, your childhood in some ways. I, you really feel back when you get back to your hometown, you're hanging out with Kel and you're learning about the people there and uh, what you guys used to do. And it just sort of hits on that little bit of nostalgia, at least for me. And I just wouldn't be surprised if it feels that way for a lot of other people too. You just think about your own childhood and the friends that you had back then. It's just so fucking good, man. 
I could gush about this story forever. Like, I loved it, man. I loved it so much. I loved how it established this lore. I loved how it just kept sort of stringing you along, you know, made you believe this one narrative only to make it realize that things were so much worse. It's so good. Uh, the graphics in this game are fantastic. I love it. I love the art style of this game. Um, whether it's the pixel art itself of the of both Headspace and the the real world, you know, the different color palettes of Headspace, this, which gives it that whimsical nature, while the real world is, you know, has regular real Technicolor, and it it just it looks so good. I I love me some great pixel art, and this game, yeah, I think it's right up there with like fucking Undertale slash Earthbound in terms of you know nailing that really fantastic feel that only those games can really do you know but at the same time giving its own unique spin on it i don't want to make it sound like this is like completely derivative of it no this is definitely unique in its own way but also just the artwork of the portraits and stuff at omo cat's own style here uh i do really like it the, at the sort of animated uh look about each of the characters where like every character has like three or four frames that like like what sonny's doing right here where it's just kind of like moving around a bit it's like the same pictures drawn again so it just gives it that kind of just gives it a little bit of movement and i don't know it's 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 very engaging i don't know it's something there's something very charming about it and the artwork itself too and just the expressions of characters and the emotions they're able to get across uh so good just they they all it all looks amazing it looks fantastic all the artwork in this game is fantastic music in this game is godlike good god I gotta give it to the composers of this game. This, there's so many songs, first off. Songs that range from like fucking bangers, you know, like so many of the boss themes, like Sweetheart's theme, her boss fight, uh, fucking Pluto's theme. Oh, dude, I love Pluto's theme so much. Both versions of it. That theme at the end with fucking uh, Mari and Sunny, that shit got me emotional, man. When I was hearing them both, you know, him playing the violin, her playing the piano. It's like the damn dude, fuck. Just the game pull so many emotions and but at the same time it also managed to do some amazing ambience when things start to get dark you know just like those moments where like he's clashing with basil and the music get all fucked up and shit it's like it's so good right it's not like a beat you go bump into but it's like it fits the moment so fucking well like just the the sound direction and music is in this game is just is again on some next level shit you know it's great i love it fucking love this soundtrack I'll be probably listening to songs from this game for fucking months. And I still say, if you want a good song to study to, listen to that one song from Black Space. Like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Love that song. Yeah, just so much of the, about this game, just fucking brilliant, right? Characters, the music, uh, the fucking writing, the sound, the graphics. I think they're all just like some next level shit. So what do I have critis just criticize about this game? And I do have something, and it is a relatively big thing. As much as I do love this game, I don't think the gameplay of the game is particularly good. And I don't mean specifically the stuff that you do when you were hanging out with the people in town. I actually think those are fine. Like, they're simple, right? The tasks they have you do are, is relatively simple, but it's the characters are so likable and engaging. It's it, it's all right. It's fine. You don't need to have some, like, mind-blowing, crazy gameplay for shit like that, right? At least I don't think so. It's fine the way it is. It was based off real world stuff to begin with. I actually like the, believe it or not, you know what I thought was kind of fun was the pizza thing. I thought the pizza delivery thing was kind of funny and a cute idea with just the, the really horribly written out directions about where to find houses. I thought that was really clever. The actual headspace itself, that gameplay, that's the gameplay that I feel is the weakest part of the game. And it sort of stands in stark contrast to where everything else in the game feels so detailed, like to an extent that is just like mind boggling, where the gameplay of Headspace feels so simple in comparison. Like the, the I think the emotion system was actually kind of cool. Um, and it seemed like it had a lot of potential, but it doesn't really go anywhere. Like the, basically it, anger is like good at the beginning and then towards the end happy is the best and sadness is pretty much always bad sadness is basically a fucking useless emotion except for that one move that sunny has that allows him to like go against breaks up uh, an opponent's defense a lot of the abilities that you end up getting to end up being kind of pointless as well i mean i get it i got a little o i got well more than a little op in both routes right but even then some of the some of those abilities like hero spicy food or the ball the, the stuff that isn't fucking uh kel's flex and sh the speed move you know even i mean that speed move even without the chicken ball is still fucking bet the best move he's got the other moves just aren't that great like they're not really super useful and they don't do anything particularly helpful or engaging like 
for a lot of the game and it, it's funny that i at the very end of the game hero gets like his ultimate skill of like an actual buff right which i never even really get to use because i get it like after it already beaten all the other bosses it's just like the, there's clearly the the stuff that's really good and then there's a whole bunch of extra shit that while it's fun to find and unlock they don't really end up being all that useful for actual fights and similarly in terms of the exploration of headspace like there are things that could be kind of fun like you know dino's dig was kind of cute and um some of the the dungeon areas were kind of nice but um the fucking sweetheart's castle and honestly slime the slime girls one too especially the second time around uh, they went on way too long way way too long like sweetheart's castle could have stopped when i like before the hedge maze the hedge maze felt unnecessary the slime girls thing too just like i think just dragged a bit too long like there's three separate sections they're each huge but i don't know, after a while you're just like fuck man i just want to get out of this whale and i'm done talking to humphreys fucking annoying <laughs> after a while there are things in headspace that just kind of like they just overstay their welcome a bit and also there's just way way too many fucking uh health giving item chests in this game like the expiration is not very good because a lot of the items you get are either health items which just isn't all that interesting or uh armor stuff and there were definitely a few good ones in there but a lot of it's just crap is you like you'll get shit that's like later in the game that's like are you like are you kidding like here's a plus plus seven to def for defense and i'm like i've already got shit that's like way better than this by now that i would have had to get if i had been searching stuff that's mandatory dungeons up to this point like why am i still getting this it also makes unfortunately it also makes shops completely useless because all the money that you get uh in the game is really only used to buy healing items you can't buy weapons or anything you can buy like the debuff and buff items but most fights in the game you don't really need that for um unless it probably i think that the moment you really start needing that shit is honestly in the hikikimori route but in like the regular story fights it's not that bad everyone's got that got an ability that basically does what that those items do anyway right you don't have anything to spend money on except for the artist and also the toll boost at one point so it makes money kind of useless in the game um it's just like so all the rpg mechanics of the actual like gameplay of this game feel a little half-baked you know like they just they weren't super well thought out and i like the thing is i have a feeling that part of this was intentional like i think the it was intended to make it so that the uh the headspace felt lesser in a lot of ways to the true root when you got into the real world right because in the reality yes headspace is not real right it's this it's all in his imagination and the point of the game is for you to overcome things to move past the uh trauma the trauma that you had suffered to escape your headspace you know that's that's the point of the game so to show that there is more to life than just you know hiding yourself away in your imagination um and i like that message i really do I, you know so if the gameplay was compromised for that reason it's like i i get it i do but i don't agree with it I don't agree with compromising the gameplay for the sake of a message because that unfortunately what that ends up leading to is at least to a game that can feel a little hollow in terms of actual gameplay in terms of actually wanting to come back and re-experience this for as much as i have enjoyed this game you know this rpg that is it's supposed to be you know an rpg in a lot of ways because it's got a lot of the stuff of it at least half of the game is an rpg i don't know if i'd really want to play it again because the thought of going back through headspace again and having to go through that stuff which was just only okay just doesn't really excite me you know just to get to the stuff that's way more interesting uh and it, it kind of sucks you know i feel like this game could have had both in my opinion i feel like if this game had had the made headspace like have really great exploration some really great battles and stuff uh and you know dungeons designed to just designed a bit better maybe a little bit maybe a little bit shorter in some spots uh and that didn't drag as much i actually think this game would be a lot better <laughs> uh i think this I actually i think if that if that were the case i think this would be like one of the best games i ever played like legit i'd be like this is like the fucking greatest game ever you know and it, it, it's sort of that's the problem i kind of hit with this game right i think this game is brilliant all right i don't want you to misunderstand that i do think that it's very possible that this was a design choice um to, to get that message across but i think 
even if the gameplay had been amazing and stuff like that, I still think that the message would have still been there, right? Um, it also it also would have made me more likely to have checked out the Hikimori route uh, if I had decided to do the true route first and come back. I'm going to tell you right now, though. If I had decided to do the uh, Hikikomori route last, I would not have done it <laughs> at this point. If I gone through the true route, I've been like, I don't think I want to do it. It's just not that much more interesting. I mean, there's there's some cool fights and stuff there, but like, this, this is exactly why people recommended that I do this route. I am so happy I did. I'm so happy I listened to the people who told me, yeah, you're, you're going to want to do the Kikamori first and then the true ending. All right. I, I wholeheartedly agree. I've seen a lot of you guys see a change in tune and a lot of people too who were, who were like, I initially thought that you should do it the other way, but I actually think this way is pretty good. You know, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's better than the other way. Okay. I'm not. Okay. I it just, I'm saying for me, it's better for me. I think it definitely led to a much greater enjoyment. I'm glad I got to experience those things uh, in the Hikikimori route. But it, it would have been lost on me if I had had all the answers, you know, because in the end, that's what drives you in this game is wanting to know the truth of everything that's going on and to get Sonny to that place where he's not it's stuck in headspace anymore. So it's kind of hard to go back and re-experience that again uh, and actually like, yeah, I'm going to go back to it. That's the sort of meant. I knew when I finished Hikikomori, I was like, yeah, this would really have sucked if I'd done this after the fucking true ending. So, yeah, it's like there's. I feel like half of a game in here that is just just brilliant. Every fucking part of it is just brilliant. And there's the other half of this game that's just okay. But it has ties, of course. Obviously, there's ties to the original story. So that really helps to fucking elevate and keep it up there. All of the, the lore hints and shit in Headspace are brilliant, too. That shit's fucking amazing, right? I love it. All the, There's like literally a origin for everything that exists in Headspace. I just fucking love it. But the gameplay, man, is just like, it's just okay. It's just okay. Like, it goes through the motions, you know? It's, but it's not something that's particularly, like, super engaging once you really get to the nitty-gritty. And it doesn't really evolve or change in any way that uh, makes the most of its mechanics. I don't know. Like, it just feels like... You know what actually was a cool, pretty cool boss fight? It was actually the uh, the optional boss fight against uh, Space Boyfriend when he came back against him. I actually thought it had a really cool mechanic where it was like, oh, you gotta go based off what his memories are and hit him with it, and that's what makes him vulnerable. I was like, oh, that's kind of clever. That played on it in a good way. And then the other ones were like, okay, well, this one just, uh, they get really angry. This one gets really, really happy. This one gets really sad. Okay, I mean, sort of all right, but nothing super crazy. Let's see this. Oh yes, the, the optional fight with the like perfect, perfect sweetheart, perfect heart or whatever was just, you just, we're gonna fuck you up. That's the fight. We're gonna fuck you up with this attack that does a billion damage to everybody and you just gotta fucking survive. I just kind of wish that the game had better gameplay for that, you know? I th if it did, I really think this game would be like, like I would, I would be like, on the hills yelling to everyone, everyone needs to play this fucking game right fucking now, even though a lot, this game's already quite popular, I think at this point. And I still do, I still wanna tell people to play this game, but it's always gonna have that caveat of just know that the RPG mechanics of this game aren't great. They're only okay. I'm not gonna say they're bad, by the way. I don't think the game, I don't think the gameplay is generally bad. Um, It's not like I was like, oh, this fuck. Like, otherwise it really, like, I didn't think going back through the game was that bad. Just like I said, moments, some moments dragged, but it doesn't, it didn't, I wasn't just like, oh, this, I just, I just can't handle this, man. That's just fucking the worst. It was just okay. And just didn't feel like it had the same level of thought and effort put into it that the rest of the game did. Um, and the story bits did. Cause that stuff truly is brilliant. But yeah, uh, I still love this game. I still think that even with those, those negatives I have against it, I still think it's fucking amazing that people should absolutely check it out. The, the story and the messages and the and the fucking ending of this game is that's gonna stick with me for a long time i know that so i do have to big, give a big congrats to the people who did work on this game to nessie to omicat to everybody else that worked on this for like six to seven years your hard work paid off because you really have made something truly spectacular that i think uh everyone should experience in some way you know touches on sensitive subjects and with such a touching uh message you know to tell about how we should be both willing to forgive ourselves and to not be afraid to rely on our friends when we need them. But yeah, guys, I think that's uh, it for me for Imori. I hope that you guys enjoyed this Let's Play as much as I did. Uh, I really did. I really enjoyed this one. I love Kel. 
He's my son. He will always be my son now. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite. It really does help me out. And subscribe if you're not already become a picky penguin. Aboard the SSLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. So yeah, we've uh, now got two Let's Plays to get started here. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, it's very likely that one of these, because it's going to come out here pretty soon, is going to be the Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrade uh, DLC for with Yuffie. Um, I don't think that one's going to be particularly long, though. I think I've only heard that song like two chapters long, so it's probably going to be pretty short. Um, but I do want to check that out because I, I loved you guys know that was my game of last year was the uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. So I absolutely want to check this out. But then we have another game, of course, to play alongside it. So um, I do also honestly have a, a one off that I did want to do at some point. I don't know if I'm going to do it now, if I do it later, if I might start work on it now. Uh, we'll see. I've just felt kind of bad because I just I feel like I haven't been giving you guys as many videos as I used to and I've so it's sort of why I've been sort of reluctant a little bit to do some of these one-off projects like it happened but uh we'll see um I'll let you guys know but again thank you guys so much for joining me on this playthrough and as always picky penguins till next time guys stay classy